just uh, yeah i just <laughs> on my instagram this morning i like announced it to everyone which oh was sick. Really cool sick, sick. yeah okay. so that was the first like actual announcement of it that it's gonna be released yeah. on this date and stuff and yeah i'm just getting ready to really go into the whole aspect of like promoting it and mm-hmm. getting the whole rollout set up so i'm really i'm really excited for that I think it's gonna be amazing really interesting um are you doing all that by yourself right now? Like all your social media and... 100% yeah. all. It's all me. Yeah. yeah. So, and it, it's always been all me. I have like five singles out. And everything with... It comes to the album cover, to shooting promotions, to photos, yeah. to applying for playlists. Like it's all just like, okay, I have to... I finished school and now it's time to work on music. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Full, it's full it's it's a full time it's like, full time yeah from when you would get up to when you sleep really mm-hmm. like because i i want to take it seriously as it's like it's a, it's a job you know mm-hmm. like i want to i want to do this i know i'm going to do this so honestly i have to take it seriously i can't just be like oh like i'm just gonna like i don't have to post anything today i'll just like slack off like i have to be like, mm-hmm. okay i have to post three times this week post four times to tiktok i have to talk about this describe yeah. this and really get into it you know so I think that's definitely something I'm trying to focus on more. It's just really trying to make sure I take this as seriously as I can. Now's the time. Yeah. Now's the time, dude. You've got, you know, the momentum's building clearly. Um, and, uh, you know, that those that window of opportunity can close really quickly. Oh, yeah. And then you're like me, you're in your 30s before you know it. And you're like, shit, like that was my time <laughs> to really push it, to really yeah. work 21 hours a day and just, yeah, you know, Go for it, mm-hmm. if you will. Really, just give it everything you possibly can. Are you? Um, there's no book on any of this, obviously. Yeah. But like, yeah. where are you getting these ideas from, or like inspiration from, for how to promote yourself correctly on social how media? How to promote it? Yeah. I'm just researching, you know, and I always want to be learning new things. So I think what I am doing and what I'm trying to do is just like research every artist like i'll look at their instagram look at mm. their socials look at their their old rollouts that they've done for like past singles that yep. have done well and really just trying to learn as much as i can yeah. from other people to incorporate into mine you know and trying to really just focus on trying to get everything out to a point where it's like i have this kind of dial to a certain like algorithm that I can be successful nice yeah yeah, yeah. get your formula figured out right yeah 100 yeah. percent. yeah i guess that's how we do that's how we do a lot of things is just sort of mimicking um, the people we look up to. Mm -hmm. Uh, And uh, you know, it goes for music, it goes for social media and you know, all this, it's working really well for this guy. Like, you know, let me try doing that. Um, Yeah. That's really cool though. It seem it seems like you, like you're respecting that there is discipline (laughs) involved in this. Like, yeah. That takes yeah. so that takes people like such a long time to really figure out. I think um, mm-hmm. so. You know, props to you for you know still being in high school and and like being so mature about that. Just being so responsible. Man. Yeah, like, thank you. Because I, I I really just started to like take it really seriously. Like I was I've always really been into music, but like in the past year I started releasing it, and since then I've been like, okay, like let me actually do this. You know, let me take yeah. it one hundred percent and. Yeah, I, I, I don't think I can think of it as just, like, something that I can just throw up and just forget about. Like, I have to, like, okay, make sure everything's 100% so it has the highest possibility to do something, yeah. you know? Yeah, 100%, dude. Um, mm-hmm. So let's let's sort of, like, let's go through the evolution a little bit. I mean, I know yeah. it hasn't been that, that long since you've been making music, but I'm really curious to hear how you started doing this. You know, what motivated yeah. you to want to try to make records? Um, yeah. I went back on your Instagram and it goes back to <laughs> about yeah. 2018, I think. Yeah, that's, that's the um, first time. And I learned quite a bit from, you know, just from the highlights highlights there. But, uh, you know, mm-hmm. uh, I, I guess we'll probably, we'll dive into, you know, the, the talent show that you, uh, that you were a part of that yeah. you ended up winning. Yeah, uh, yeah age 13 i think I you was were 13 yeah so why don't we start there let's go back to like age 13 um you know obviously singing and yeah. playing guitar at that point yeah and um how long before you decided oh i want to da- audition for this show mm-hmm. had you been like singing and, and making music at home uh i think i always really 
enjoyed making music and everything. I grew up in a pretty musical household with like my my family and my parents always really supporting music and always having music on. And both my older th- sisters would always be playing music around the house. So I think that to get to that evolution to where I am now, it just really happened with just growing up in a place where music was always really supported and mm-hmm. always really around. And I think that I got to the point where it was just something that I really enjoyed to do. I did piano lessons for like quite a few years. That I really didn't enjoy that mm. much <laughs> at all. But yeah, you too. <laughs> yeah, I, I did it for like five years mm-hmm. and I really didn't enjoy it, honestly. But I would like sing to the piano. I thought that was pretty cool. Okay. And then I learned drums as well. And then I learned, moved on to guitar, which is the one I play like majority of the yeah. time now. And yeah, I think just really trying new things and really practicing and it was always supported in my family. And I think just, I enjoyed it, you know? And I think that's what made it like really happen for me was that it didn't feel like I was like, oh, I have to go and like practice this, you know? I could be like, no, I really actually like to go and play my guitar for four hours today, you know? I like to go and sing, I like to go and do this. So I think that got, that got me to the point where I was like, okay, like this is really, really cool for me that I can do this. And then when I was 12, I auditioned for uh, a talent search in Calgary at the Calgary Stampede. And I got to go to the Calgary and play and do like a few shows around at the Calgary Stampede, which was really, really cool. And I did a talent competition. I was too young to like actually like continue with the competition. Okay. But I got to go and... I got to go and perform there and like play some shows around there. That must have been wild. I thought that was like really cool. The, yeah, like the good, energy yeah. and just the, you know, all the people everywhere and the noise. And yeah. Like, was that, were, did you have some mad butterflies? But like, oh yeah. It was definitely nerve wracking. It was yeah. definitely nerve wracking, but I, I just really enjoyed it, you know? And I, I was pretty young. So like, I wasn't even like 100% there with my like musical like sure. skills and stuff. Mm-hmm. But, I just thought it was like, this is so cool that like people actually want to hear me. You know, people actually want to like listen to what I have to say and stuff. So I I really enjoyed that. And then after that, the year after, I started trying to like audition for more things with my music. And I wasn't really taking it 100% seriously, but it kind of went from being like, oh, this is kind of fun too. I really enjoy this. So like, oh, let me go and try to do this competition. And like, oh, I, I won it, you know? And it got to a point where I was like, oh, maybe I'm, I'm actually pretty good at this, maybe, right, you know? Right, And it was it was interesting for me to see that, like, this is actually, like, people want to hear this and people want to hear my music. And then from there, I did the, the BC Talent Search, which right. is the one that you were talking about. And I won that at 13. And it was cool because it was, like, people who were, like, in their 20s were going against me. And I was right, like, dang, right. I won that at 13. That's insane. You know? Yeah. I don't want to, like, brag about it or anything, but I, I, was, I was really happy and really really grateful that I won of that, course. you know? Cause I thought it was just really, really cool for me that I could, I could do that. And from then on, I, I auditioned to play at Granville Island. So actually for like three years, I was a busker at Granville Island. I still, I saw that. I yeah. still am. And yeah, I like to, I like to really just do shows and stuff there. And it was really, really cool for me that I could do that. Um, now if we could re- rewind a teeny bit yeah. to the talent show. Mm-hmm you were performing original material that you had written? Yeah, so yeah. that was like the f- one of the first songs that I'd really like kind of like fully actually written. And I, I wrote it because I was like, everyone's doing like cover songs and stuff for this show. Like, let me try to do something a little bit different. Mm-hmm. And I wrote the song for it and yeah, they liked it. And I, I won with that song. And it honestly was a very bad song, <laughs> but... <laughs> It was just progression, you know, and yeah. I thought it was good at the time. Yeah. And obviously some people liked it. And yeah, that kind of got me to winning that show. And then um, busking at Granville, I know you have to audition for that, right? Mm-hmm. So you go mm-hmm. and sit in front or you perform in front of a panel of judges. Yeah, and, yeah. Now, what did you play for them for the audition? For the audition, I think I did like an Ed Sheeran cover song. Okay. And then I did like one of my own songs or something yep. too. But I, I have a loop pedal that I, I would play with at Granville Island. So I would like loop a beat on my guitar and play into the pedal. And I could make like a whole like beat surrounding the song to go with me playing live, which is pretty cool. Oh, sick. So I think yep. that was kind of a different, a different thing that 
wasn't really happening as much. And I could kind of like bring a whole something new to the table. So and that kind of helped me get the spot at Gravel Island as well. Dope. So you did that for a couple of like three years and at Gravel Island, yeah. yeah, I did it for like yeah, three, four. I'm still technically doing it. Yeah. I haven't been doing it as much and with COVID and everything, mm. it kind of yeah. slowed it down quite a bit. Yeah. But yeah, I did it for quite a while and I was going like quite regularly, like every weekend or something, I would go and I'd perform there, which is really, really cool for me. So high traffic i mean anywhere people are busking is going to be high traffic right like mm -hmm. the, you know all the the spots on on gravel and whatnot but um yeah that must have been somewhat lucrative right like yeah gravel have some good days definitely know? definitely it was it was some pretty good days i'd be like wow like i, I did quite well today yeah. you know like and i was really really proud of myself for that and I wasn't very old. I was like 14 and all my friends were getting like dishwasher jobs and stuff. <laughs> and my mom was like, you should, you should do that too. You know, cause that's what everyone's doing. Yeah. I was like, yep. I, I'm, do, I, I want to do this. You know, like I'm doing pretty well with this, you know, like I'm, I can make this much in an hour versus like minimum wage in an hour. Like I think that's pretty great. And doing something that you're stoked I, about I, the I entire really love time. To do. Yeah. yeah. So it was, it was really, really cool that I could kind of do what I loved and make some money from it too. Hell yeah. Yeah. That's awesome, dude. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, Granville Island. Um, I haven't been there in a minute, but like, yeah. what what were your hours like when you were there, like so, busking, and and also like, are you doing this on the weekends because you're still in school at the time, yeah. right? So, how do you where do you put that into your schedule? Uh, so yeah, I was still in school. I was like beginning of high school, so okay. like grade eight, grade nine, yeah. when I really started doing it. So I'd go like every weekend, every Saturday or Sunday. And my hours would be probably around maybe like four, four hours a day. So I, I would have a set and I would play for an hour there and then pack up and go to the next one, play for an hour there. Maybe have like a break in between, play for another hour. So I'd be having the same set, but I'd be playing mm. for like three to four hours a day. Okay. Which is quite a lot. Again, yep. especially on your voice, you get tired after a while. Definitely. And yeah. The last set would be like, who oh, I'm like having to push through this one. <laughs> but yeah, I think it just, it got, it got me used to performing live, which I think was really, really valuable mm -hmm. for me because I've performed live quite a bit now. Nice. You know, and I think that's something that lots of artists don't maybe get the chance to. So I'm really, really grateful that I can perform live and really kind of work on my live show just for like practice and yep. get paid for it too. So, 110. Yeah. I yeah. mean, I always remind, um, younger artists how important it is to you know a memorize your verse <laughs> but yeah. b like remind them yo you're doing this on the mic in like 15 takes like eventually you're going to want to perform this right so yeah. consider you know your stamina and and what it's going to take for you to be able to deliver this in front of an audience when you can't stop mid yeah. take with the engineer Absolutely. there right so practicing um live is such a good way of like learning your body learning your voice your instrument getting to know your mm. your delivery and and yeah like your stamina how, how you project your voice um and then when you go on the mic in the studio it should be like nothing right yeah for sure for sure and i think moving to the mic and moving to recording it was definitely like a, a bit of a different experience for sure mm-hmm and I kind of had to learn, like, oh, I can, like, actually redo this part and not get it perfect every <laughs> yeah, single time. Yeah. But, yeah, I think learning how to record versus, like, learning how to perform live or two, like, very different things. I think it took me a while to realize that. But I think once I did, it was, like, really, like, mm -hmm. mind-blowing almost a little bit to kind of see, like, doing this versus doing this, you know? So yeah. when, when did you first get recording equipment and start to you know record yourself at home make demos uh like so the first time i really started recording was uh hmm. probably i was like maybe like 14 ish and i just had garage band like i didn't have like any awesome. other dawes yeah i had garage bands and i had a little i had a mic i did think the at 2020 the Nice. That was my first mic yeah, as well. Yeah, that's a great mic. Yeah. Honestly, I loved that mic yeah. a lot. So I, ha I had the AT2020 and I had this other like little, uh, what's it called? The, I don't know. I forget. I'm, I'm totally blank on what it's called. But I had the this name other, of another mic. It wasn't a mic. It was the, 
Oh, you like your interface? So yeah, the interface. I was blanking. And was it an M Audio or a Scarlet? Maybe. Yeah, or? it was M Audio. It was an M yeah. Audio oh, interface. <laughs> yes. And it was like a little. It, was, it wasn't like a crazy one. It was a little one. Yeah. And I had that and the AT Twenty Twenty and just GarageBand, and I was just like try to like record my guitar into it and make beats and stuff. And they were so bad. <laughs> they were the worst things ever. But they they I think they kind of taught me how to like really kind of build a foundation for how to make a song. Right. And I didn't even really know what type of music I really wanted to make. I didn't really know like what I wanted to do with the the sounds and what I wanted to kind of like create as an artist. I didn't really have that vision yet. I was kind of just like, oh, like I do music, you know? Yeah. And yeah, it kind of really taught me how to build the foundation for these beats and stuff. But I really kind of started taking it seriously when we had lockdown. And I was like, okay, I'm going to like learn how to produce because... The reason I really want to learn how to do this is because I had like studio sessions in the past that like didn't really go well for me. Oh, really? Like I had a studio session when I was like 13 and I just got the song back and I was like, I really just don't like it. Like mm. I didn't like the way it turned out. And that was partially me just not knowing what I wanted to do. And also partially that it just, I couldn't really express how I wanted it to feel. Sure. And I got it back and I was like, I hate this. I'm not going to record again. Like I'll just stick to like doing God Loud and stuff, you know? And I didn't record for, like, another, like, year or so. But then we had lockdown, and I was like, I'm going to learn how to produce. So I just had my laptop, and I would just keep on making these beats on GarageBand, and they kind of went from being really bad to a little less bad to <laughs> mediocre. And they kept on getting a little bit better every time I would try to make new ones and stuff. And I started to learn how to do some sampling with, like, mm -hmm. things on, like, Splice and stuff. Nice. And really kind of make my own music and yeah i started to record my voice a bit more and with the beats and stuff and really kind of find my sound more as an artist which was really really cool for me garage band was also the first daw i ever had yeah yeah um it's funny we have all these similarities and how when we started same mic same daw same interface um i think it was a quite a bit different when i first you know started um the technology definitely wasn't there uh, with GarageBand. It was so mm. primitive. Mm -hmm. I haven't opened GarageBand in a while. Like I, I still do use Logic quite a bit, which is the big brother yeah. Uh, yeah, for, that's what I for use GarageBand. Now. But um, I bet I would just be blown away now if I opened it and saw uh, the things that you could do with it. I know... Yeah. I, I remember how good the, the, the loop library was, for example. Yeah. Like, now you said you were... Even back then, the loop library was pretty good. We had to go out of our way to buy expansion packs on DVDs <laughs> yeah. and then install those and get like extra sounds. This is like way before Splice and everything, right? We're talking 2006, 2007. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, but we still made like albums, like my friends yeah. and I that were using it. We Not not just songs, like we put out albums wow, that's crazy. Um, with GarageBand and, and using all the royalty-free loops and things like that. Mm -hmm. So how much were you using, you know, the built-in loops? How much were you, you know, when you're first learning it, obviously, yeah. and how much of it was Splice and how much was maybe something else? Uh, splice wasn't until like later on at the very kind of end of like the GarageBand stuff. Actually, I don't think I could even use Splice in GarageBand. I think that was the logic. I started using Splice. Okay. But the loops, I would definitely use quite a bit. Uh, yeah, the loops were really everything at first because I didn't really know how to play like a good pattern enough in like the instruments on GarageBand. Mm. So the loops definitely really helped me kind of like, okay, this drums would sound good with this thing here and these like synths would sound good with like this piano here. So mm -hmm. I think kind of helped me like learn how to put different instruments together to like make a whole sound and to like sound good together yep but yeah and yeah i think i messed up on earlier on the splice part i think it was that i started using splice like when i just started with logic okay yeah yeah um yeah man <sighs> garage band was so cool with mm -hmm. drag from the library on the right and then just drop it into oh, yeah. your into yeah. your arrange window and then mm -hmm. loop it and then just like like within seconds, you had these building blocks to just put together a symphony. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. And I think that really was really impactful for me because mm -hmm. it could be like, wow, I could make 
from nothing to something like 30 seconds you know <laughs> Actually, you know yeah you could you could have so much stuff to like really make a whole song you know and i think that was really really cool for me i was really really happy about that it's that. yeah it when when you first yeah not not even get the hang of it but first like even see what it's capable of it's just like mm. addictive it's like oh my god this is so exciting like yeah. look at the, the, these infinite possibilities right here in front of me mm -hmm. i just want to keep doing this i just want to try all all these different sounds and, yeah and and um get inspired by these beats that i'm making and um that's awesome dude so from garage band evolved into logic at some point yeah um i'm curious did you have a midi keyboard at any at any point during this yeah yeah so i got the midi keyboard a little bit later after using GarageBand, it was just the, I still have the same one as the, the M Audio, like little MIDI yep. keyboard. And that one was, worked great for me, honestly. Okay. Like, I, I really, really like that one. And yeah, I started using the MIDI keyboard with GarageBand. And it worked great, honestly. Like, it just worked to kind of help me, like, play. Because I did have the piano experience, so I know how to of course, yeah. like, make the chords and stuff. And it really worked well. And then that went into using that with Logic and... Then after I kind of got adjusted to Logic, I really started to like learn how to make better beats. And then I got Spice and stuff, and mm -hmm. the the sound kind of variety opened up even more to be like, okay, yeah. it's not like just in this one thing with yeah. the Apple loops and stuff yeah. in GarageBand. It went to like being I can have like anything and yeah. like make it sound exactly how I want to sound. And you know, I started like using more 808s and mm -hmm. kind of finding a bit more of my sound as an artist, which I was really really happy about. I thought that was like the coolest thing takes a while i mean mm. to find your sound or develop yeah. or, or or really if you even ever find your sound yeah but, yeah but for um, sure. i know i remember for me it was definitely uh just before i used to do this podcast and 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 mix for local artists and things like that i mm. used to make records and you know i i emceed i put out like six albums wow yeah. as a rapper slash producer yeah and collab you know I, I was making my own beats but also collaborating with quite a few friends in, in victoria where i grew up mm. and um definitely my style of rapping was highly influenced by my favorite rappers right yeah like people like Nas and oh yeah things like that sure. um and and then in the beginning you know i'm just trying to mimic that or i'm just trying to sound like that because that's the formula that's the only thing that i know mm -hmm. But let me like tell my own story in that style and then eventually it you know i think i did quote unquote find my sound but it, it took me a while you know and then yeah shortly after that i just decided i wanted to engineer full-time so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no regrets it's just that's the way that it that yeah. was how it all evolved for me but mm -hmm. Um, I'm curious like who, to hear, you know, who, who are some of your inspirations and some of your favorite artists growing up or even right now? Uh, honestly, like I think I said before, like finding my sound, but really I don't think there's always going to be like a certain sound. Like I think there's a million different influences that can go into my sound. And even if you listen to like all my songs out right now, some of them sound similar, but then maybe there'll be some things that are a little bit different and completely different ones in the future. And even ones that are out now that are different from the first mm -hmm. ones. You know, so I think my sound is currently and constantly always evolving into something new and to just what I'm listening to right now. Because I'm, I'm always like trying to listen to new music and yep. find new artists. So I think my influences in my music are uh, this artist named Mike. And he's just had a really kind of cool sound recently. His album, The Highs, I really, really like that sound. It's kind of just a cool laid back kind of like pop r&b sound okay. which is really the genres and stuff that i'm kind of in also just like listening to randomly i've just been listening to like a bunch of different music across genres i've been listening to this artist dylan marlowe and he's a song called record high and it's like a country song mm. and i'm not country music at all but i just thought i liked the production on it and i really liked the sound it had and right. kind of the vibe it had across and I've been listening to, I was listening to like Bryson Tiller and like Ryan Trey. I really like his okay. music as well. Okay. And Boston, Vancouver artist. I really, really like his sound as well. Yeah, right on. So honestly, but my sound is constantly always evolving and changing. And I'm always just trying to listen to new music and really try to find new things. When I, when I listen to your catalog on 
well for me it's apple music yeah um it's such a good collection of just solid r&b yeah right um it it sounds so authentically you but it's still like it's r&b mm -hmm. um now going from 14 year old playing original song at talent show with guitar to yeah. what you have on now yeah definitely how big, do you get a big the, how do you get to that sound <laughs> uh that sound just got from me getting older i think and like expanding my music taste like i was always really into like justin bieber and like ed sheeran was definitely a really big influence when i was like 13 14 but then i think i got older and i started listening to more rap and more r&b right and more kind of like pop music and stuff and I think I just really got influenced by the music that I was listening to. And I think that's kind of what inspired me to make that type of music that's a little bit more R&B influenced. Yeah. Yeah. And I, yeah, just really listening to more and more artists that are music that I really like to listen to. Sure. They really kind of influenced me into, yeah, doing Yeah, music I mean, I make that makes now. sense. Um, So we're getting closer to like present day right now you know in the, in the story yeah um as you know I've, you know i've been checking out your music all week and getting ready for today and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. checking out your instagram and uh you know i guess your current setup at home you have what i th saw was like a silver face apollo and yeah. some little I don't know what speakers those are, but those uh, little black. They're like the iRig speakers. The iRig speakers. Yeah, and they're great. Yeah, like, they I, sound amazing. I forgot what they were called, but I do know a yeah. few other people that have them. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, just and, and recording at home. So let's get into that. Uh, yeah. That a little bit. Like, uh, are you still rocking the eight the uh, the Audio Technica microphone? No, so or? I had the Audio Technica up until last year. So my first two singles were recording on "Call You" and "Too Fast" with both recording the audio technica and i got i saved up and i bought myself the apollo which was like game changing yeah and then i just not i just but like a year ago i just bought the this one the sure sm7b nice. mm -hmm. and that's been really really great for me mm -hmm. recently too just really crisp vocals and yeah i'm still learning how to like maneuver these mics and maneuver the apollo and stuff but for recording wise it's definitely been a big step up from the audio technica and the m audio yeah for sure yeah yeah um the yeah the sure requires like way more gain oh than, yeah than, for sure um, i definitely i definitely noticed that when recording right yeah but i think i've gotten used to it to a point where like my vocal presets are pretty good nice yeah i mean it, it sounds so good uh yeah. your 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 singles um call me probably one of my favorite ones that so that was recorded on your audio technica yeah call you was recorded on the Audio Technica, yeah. and now it's just recorded in my room. All of them mm -hmm. are recorded in mm -hmm. my room. Like this, this is pretty crazy because like this is the second time I've ever been to a recording studio, and I have five singles out. You know, <laughs> like because everything is just me. Yeah. Like it's just yeah. like I'm just in my room. I get home from school, and I'll just produce, and I'll record, and then the single will be out. You know, and, unreal. Um, now those beats, the beats that mm -hmm. that are on. The, the singles that you have out you yeah. put out four singles in 2022 i put out four singles yeah. in 2022 yeah. yeah yeah and all of those were recorded by you at home all recorded by me all produced by me yeah insane wow mm -hmm. um those wow <laughs> yeah they sound so good dude and, and yeah. the production is like i mean it's really it's really professional though like yeah. your drum patterns and, yeah. and your samples and your your bass lines like Mm -hmm. How are you getting those sounds? Are you getting like loops of a of a bass line? Are you programming bass lines somehow in 808s? Or? Uh, a bit of both, for mm -hmm. sure. Call You was pretty much a lot of splice. Okay. A splice pack pretty much was lots of Call You. Yep. Of course, I do my own production in that. But for the other ones, like Too Fast, like I played the guitar in Too Fast. Right. I did the 808s. And it's not like me really finding a, a sample pattern like I'll normally be like playing them on my MIDI controller. Mm -hmm. and yeah it depends really the song though like quite a few i do have just like splice packs that go into the song quite a bit especially with like the drums and stuff like that right. but a lot of it is is me like playing it real time and lots of the instruments are live instruments too which is pretty cool um guitar so what uh, what other live instruments are we talking about so it's just like guitar and then 
really honestly it's really just guitar yeah okay but i i like i'll like play the drums on like all the the mini controllers and stuff like that too mm. as well yeah for some okay. parts yeah so in, the, in in those in those splice packs it'll come with like kick snare open hat yeah you know yeah. hat right mm -hmm. and then you you program program those on to individual yeah yeah uh, I, keys on the keyboard and you're just kind of and i'll just uh, yeah. play it into that yeah that's what i'll do and I'll normally like I'll pick and choose like different ones from different splice packs. So like if I like the kick from like this pack, yeah. I'll put it into here. If right. I like the snare from this one, yeah. but also Logic has like recently with the new update, they've had quite a few like really really good, uh, like packs. Like they have like their own like drum packs, mm -hmm. and for like background drums and stuff. Because normally a song I'll have like four different drum patterns going on like i'll have like maybe like a splice one then i'll put my own one over it then like some background ones or something like that so the ones on logic have been really really good i know take a day trip they did their own like collab with logic okay. and they had uh their own like drum pack come out with it and like synthesizers and stuff and i've been using those a lot like they've been really 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 good for just like adding on to like little yeah aspects and stuff yeah i haven't made a beat in logic in i don't know maybe four years but yeah i'm sure it's changed since then even, even at the time it was good i mean it, it it's cool how they you can tell they're sort of keeping up with current sounds because oh, yeah. when i was making music trap music didn't even exist it hadn't even been yeah. invented yet right so mm -hmm. like the hip-hop drums in garage band or, or logic Might be were a little different yeah. were like 808 drum machine stuff right or mm. like new york soundy drums mm. um and then you know into the 2010s 11s they started ha they have like that atlanta kit or whatever they call it and the yeah. the uh oh there's a really cool name for one of the <laughs> one of the drum kits i can't remember like uh something like trunk rattling it kick or something like that but yeah they have a bunch of really really good sounds yeah. they've got good sounds and good names and you can tell they're making an effort to sort of stay current yeah right and good on logic for doing that for yeah. sure yeah, for like yeah. really keeping up with everything but yeah do you, you use pro tools for all yeah your... if i'm mixing it's well it's whatever the client sends me like yeah um there's a few people that uh that record themselves at home and and you know have the session in logic and then just zip the logic session and i open yeah, it up that's here what and i do when I, when I send it to get mixed um that works really well or or pro tools um same same deal just send me the session but if it's mm. uh you know I've, I've done not many but some ableton uh records and you know just ask for the stems at that point and then a reference mix right so i can yeah. kind of see where they were at mm -hmm. and then build from there um but yeah, yeah having the having the uh option obviously of just opening up someone's session and picking up exactly where mm. they left off yeah is pretty is cool to see. the best yeah um because then you're just adding to the vision you're not really starting from scratch or or undoing anything right yeah it's definitely really cool to like being able to open up a session and really play around with it how you want and mm -hmm. make it to that next level and i know that i've noticed that once I've gotten like my mixes back, like mm -hmm. just it's a different level. Yeah. Like I, I think my production's not bad, but like I'll send it to like a mix engineer and I'll get it back. Like wow, like that definitely makes it from like a demo to like a pro a professional record. song. Yeah. yeah. So who have you worked with? This like mixing engineer so wise. So my next song changed. Uh, it's with Jamie Cuse, and he did a really really great job mixing. Yeah, it sounds incredible. And I'm really really happy with how it came out. And all my other songs have been mixed with uh, an artist and producer out of Toronto named Chris Gray. Okay. And he's like Juno nominated and he's really great. And he's really done a lot of like great things for my songs and stuff. And he co-produced Motions with me. Nice. And he mixed all my other songs that I have out. So it's it's pretty cool like how how far the songs have come since like just producing them in my room mm. to like having them out on Spotify. How did the two of you guys get connected? So my voice coach for a while was Lorraine Lawson, and uh, he worked with her as well. And we made the connection through that. She introduced us, and we both worked together just after being introduced, and we Sweet. both worked together to okay. work on the songs. And yeah, it was really, really great. It's the best way to meet people. It's... it's, it's mm -hmm so valuable to know as many people as you can in, in the oh, music yeah. industry right like oh, i find yeah. some of the best opportunities ever just 
are almost handed to me because I knew someone. It's mm-hmm. not like me like trying to go find it's just like my grapevine or my oh yeah wheel is, is bigger and stronger and then things just sort of work within that so effortlessly. Yeah. So yeah. And I think I've noticed that more as like I'm coming into the music industry in Vancouver and how like tight knit everything is mm-hmm. and how there's so many artists that are doing it. And I, even in the past like six months, like after I started releasing music, I've been like, wow, like I know this person who knows this person knows knows this person really like breaking into it with all the other amazing artists that are out here. It's it's really, really, really cool to see. Yeah. And also like representing Vancouver and stuff. Yeah, man. You know, like that's so important for me. So good. Yeah. I'm so glad to hear that. Yeah. I love I love that. Like let's 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 do more of that. Let's hear more of that. Let's support local music and 100%. let's be proud of where we're from, like this place, yeah. you know? Mm-hmm absolutely because there's already a toronto there's already a new york there's already a atlanta and a la like let's yeah we you know. we definitely have to try to break vancouver in that way mm. and i think there's been artists that have been quite successful out of vancouver of course but i think we have to try to make it to the same way like that drake did it with toronto yeah. you know because drake really put toronto on the map for being that r&b hip-hop scene you know and it really changed the game for th- Canada, just in general. Undeniable. Right? Yeah. So I, I think if, I don't know if it's going to be me, I don't know if it's going to be somebody else, but I think really just repping Vancouver and really like putting the effort into try to get it to where we want it to be. Yeah, man. Is so important. Yep. And use Canadian money in your music videos. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to see any more American dollars in any of these Canadian music videos. Yeah. Um, let's be proud of where we're from. Um, so let's go back to logic and, and, and recording yourself at home a little bit more. Yeah. Um, obviously your songs are, you know, you, you're, they're being finished by someone else. And, and, mm-hmm. and you, like you said a minute ago, like you find great value in that and you, you oh, realize yeah. how important that is. Um, yeah. To not skip that step. Uh, what, you know, before you're sending these sessions off and you're building your sound at home, you're, you're massaging things and, and, putting the record together are you using mostly stock plugins are there is it some wave stuff is it slate stuff can we can we nerd out on uh, plugins and sure. stuff for a minute? Hon- honestly honestly it's a lot of stock logic plugins because like, i can't afford to like be spending all this money on all these other plugins you know mm-hmm. so i i just kind of use what i got and it's worked really really great for me and especially with the mix engineer, they can put some of their plugins that they may yeah, have they can add to it, yeah. onto it as well. But I just use what I got and get creative with it, you know? Nice. So, like, I've, like, gone over every Logic plugin and stuff. So, like, I know, like, okay, I'm going to use this for my guitar. Yeah. I don't have all these, like, crazy expensive plugins that I can just put onto it. But I know there's, like, this one, this one, this one. That can make it sound good. You know, and, and, and just, Logic is no slouch. Like, there's oh, some yeah. really good built-in stuff. Their compressor mm-hmm. suite. They've got yeah. one of everything. Oh, yeah. And they're all really, really good. For sure. And especially with just recording vocals and stuff. Like, I know I'll probably have something different with the mix engineer that they'll put onto it. Yeah. But just for, like, the time being, if I want to mm-hmm. have, like, a good sounding vocal, I know I'll have something that I can put onto it to, like, give it that good effect and yeah. give it a good reverb, give it a good compressor, give it a good... To get EQ. you yeah. more jazzed about it in the moment, right? Yeah. Because you don't want to be... I mean, maybe not excited for the song. Yeah, yeah. like you want to exactly. You, yeah. you want to like add some stuff to it as you're working on it, right? Yeah, to get you absolutely. to like be feeling it and and, yeah. and get it to as far as you can take it, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, have you? I recently started using the um, the vintage EQ collection on uh, Logic. I think I've played around with it a little bit. They and have the it's pretty cool. The Pultec, the API, and the Neve. Um, emulations and they're so good are they they're so yeah. good yeah. like they're as good as the uad ones or or oh, better yeah. like they're they sound incredibly like as you can see i have some analog equipment here so i i feel like i'm in a position to say like digital sounds this way analog sounds this way but one thing you notice with analog is like it's so much more forgiving and you can add so much more to it before it starts to sound like crap. Mm. And, and those, those uh, vintage EQ collection in, in logic mm. have that like 
analogness where you can push it like seven, eight, nine dB, and it still it still sounds musical oh, yeah. somehow. So sure. um, I like to put those on like subgroups or you know maybe on the mix bus even and and try the right one. But um, can't recommend those enough. Built in, yeah. included with the program. Perfect. Again, like yeah. they're, they're so good. <laughs> yeah. And that's the thing. I'm so like, I'm definitely not very good at like getting everything with the plugins and everything all perfect yet. I'm still learning as much as I can with production, you know, like I've only really been doing it for the past two years. Mm -hmm. But honestly, like it's really great what you can do with just what's in the program. And it's oh, really, dude. really great it's what amazing. you can do. Yeah. Just having it right in front of you mm -hmm. to kind of really make it into a full finished song, you know, because all the songs that I've put out have all just been with the stock plugins for like what I've used. I don't know if the mix engineer put any other plugins on, but like what I've put out, yeah. and what I've produced has just been all stock plugins. Well, stock stuff. Yeah. yeah. I know it's incredible. It's, it, it really is, um, you know, gives you such a good uh, foundation at, at the very least, you know? Yeah. And, and you could, you could, you know, you could put out a record with stock plugins um i i'm i'm always you know more on the side of learn your plugins better before going and buying more plugins absolutely right yeah. like i really you know i have other engineer friends and that, that are always like on the next sale like that oh waves has got a sale like oh <laughs> yeah you I'm, know but yeah i find like more value in 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 yeah. trying to learn like trying to master the four that I have rather than going to buy like seven other ones. Cause I saw mm -hmm. a sale or something. And I've absolutely gone down that road before. Like I was seen like the wave sales and stuff but like, Oh, yeah. I have to, I should go yeah. and buy something. Yeah. But I'm like, I have this here and this is working good for it's me. It's working you know? for you. There you go. And like, there's definitely been a few ones where I'm like, I need to buy this plugin. Like I really want to buy a little altar boy. I've heard really mm -hmm. good things about yeah. it. And all just, the sound toy stuff you should get. Eventually. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I, I really I really I need to invest in yeah. that. But honestly, like with the stuff that I've done with the equipment that I've used, it, it's really worked great mm -hmm. for me. So like yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, if it's not broke, you know, don't fix it. Absolutely. Don't add don't yeah. don't don't feel like you need to. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Because XYZ. Like if you you've got a thing that's working for you really well, clearly. Um, yeah, I mean, that's very wise. Just keep doing the thing that's working for you just yeah. adding too many other sauces might mess up your recipe so um but yeah alter boy is like th there's 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 a handful of plugins that are just sort of synonymous with n like the sound that we hear today like yeah. you're a travis scott record and i'll i'll name you like five other plugins oh, that yeah. are on there right like that you can't really live without mm -hmm. certain reverbs like valhalla like most people use valhalla things yeah. like that but um I'm a I'm a huge fan of the the sound toy stuff um, and Alter Boy, fantastic for lead vocals or I like doing a little bit of pitch shifting on like on like ping pong delays or like if I'm gonna do like a reverb throw or a, sorry like a delay throw for yeah. a moment. Mm. Alter Boy it pitch shifted a little bit so that that delay yeah. sounds different than the lead, things like that. Um, but they're they're really like not just plugins but creative tools oh yeah um, for sure and just kind of get more creative with the sound you want to create sound manipulation tools really really good stuff mm -hmm. um so any plans on uh i i mean and, and I'll, i'm gonna feel really stupid if you already have a video out but i, I checked out your youtube i don't yeah. like are you planning on no, putting out a video? Uh, I, like I don't have any video? videos out right now. I would love to put out a video. Okay. I want to make sure it's for like the right song though. And like, I don't, I don't really know like what it would look like yet, you know, mm -hmm. but I think definitely in the future, I want to put out a video and get my YouTube going. Cause my YouTube's pretty dated with my stuff that I have on it. Like really like my Instagram is like my main thing along sure. with like all like my music on Spotify and app music and yep. stuff. That's really like my current stuff. But my YouTube's definitely a little bit dated. And I really want to try to get some more current stuff up with like my singles and maybe get a video out at some point. I think mm -hmm. that'd be great for sure. Yep. Um, I know you're doing a lot of this by yourself right now. Mm -hmm. um, but putting together a team, you know, yeah, somebody who can do your 
socials for you eventually somebody who can you mm -hmm. know I, I think of all the great artists that i've watched come up in vancouver or you yeah. know, people like boslin people like jamon people yeah. like you know uh in, in, within a similar genre as yours that mm -hmm. that um i was privileged privileged enough to sort of watch them develop when i was at two track all those yeah. for, for all those years and the one thing that always struck me as like so impressive was that um there was just a person for every role like the, that artist was a business that artist was yeah. a brand that artist yeah. was you know fill in the blank but you have to make it that way for sure um whether it's finding the right people that you trust to that are willing to like invest in you and and help you come up and maybe for no money at the beginning but with yeah. the, with the hope and the promise that you are going to be special one day that you are going to be something great and they're going to be a part of that and they all build together um that was how i saw it go down with with boslin and and jamon and it was beautiful it was it was just like a, they were such like these well-oiled machines you know what yeah I mean? um obviously the artist is still involved in all of those things but it's mm -hmm. so nice when you can sort of have someone else to worry about all those things yeah. and just get to making the music right yeah and I, I think that's just the next level for mm -hmm. me like i'm not that level yet where i can have a full team doing everything but you know like i truly believe that i can have a hundred thousand monthly listeners by end of next year like i i believe that 100 percent, and i truly believe that like i can make i can have this as my career and i can make sure that this music stuff is gonna work out for me you know it's amazing so I'm just doing everything I can to make this a business, like you said, to like make it a full thing with just me, you know? Like I'm getting all my, all my fits and like designing everything for that. I'm shooting the album covers all myself, just like on my iPhone. Yep. I'm really producing everything. I'm getting everything all sent out. I'm submitting the playlist. I'm promoting on social media, you know? Like I'm really just trying to do everything to yeah. make this as successful as possible. Because I, I, I know it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. But I know it won't happen if I don't put the work in. Yeah, I mean, in the beginning, you're going to have to do all those things yourself. Absolutely, um, yeah. And I'm completely fine with that. Because if you don't do them yourself mm -hmm. and get a feel for what's involved with it, how are you going to know if someone else who's doing it for you is doing it right? Yeah. <laughs> if you never and, got a chance to learn it yourself, right? And it's also, like a little bit of trust issues too. Like I said before, I had like a really bad experience in the studio. Sure, yeah. And that those trust issues forced me to learn how to like do producing because I, I was see, like I no one else is gonna do it as good as me mm -hmm. and that's a little bit of an ego thing <laughs> but it's just i want to sound perfect and you know i know that i'm gonna work harder for me than anyone else would to like make sure it sounds perfect yeah yeah you know? no good for you man that's really really cool to hear that mm -hmm. um do you feel like there's something missing like do you feel like oh i wish i had this right now to help me do this uh yes 100 i think a team would be great like i think to have people that help me with managing like my socials mm. and really putting stuff out because that that honestly that's really where i do struggle is getting the music to more ears and more listeners totally. and stuff yeah and i'm starting to build more of like plans as the more music i release and like starting to learn like okay like if i do this 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 and this will help me grow so like i'm putting together like a social media plan like I did a post today, I have to do a post in two days and then a few TikToks throughout the week and really just try to make sure I can strategically like get to everything I want to do and accomplish everything I want to do to try to make it effective. But it's hard because like I don't know the other secrets and tricks and stuff. It's just me experimenting to try to figure yeah. it out. Yeah, that's yeah. all That's all you've got to do. I mean, that's all you can do right now. And, yeah. and there's clearly no lack of passion and dedication mm -hmm. on oh, your yeah. end and you know you're at that age where you're you know you're just kind of um all, just a lot of energy <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> you know um c coming into your prime um so is this all you i mean there must be a good deal of uh support from your family as well yeah yes and no there's definitely a good deal of support from like my parents and stuff but at the same time he's like oh like when are you gonna like do your real job and stuff like when are you gonna like get like a nine to five and stuff like come on like you know like this is gonna end sometime you know so there's definitely support with it yeah. but i feel like the belief isn't 
100% there. And I'm very, very fortunate that my parents, they, they do support me, but I feel like I do still have to prove that it's going to work, you know? And I feel like right. I still have to really work to show people because like everyone else right now is like all universities and schools and stuff. And I'm like, I, I don't know if I'm going to do that. You know, I have other stuff lined up. So really just, I really want to try to prove to people that I can do this, you know? Is there a plan B right now? No. And I I, I really, my dad always told me this. He was like, if you have a plan B, you're just going to fall back on that plan B. Mm. You know? He's like, I have to, I have to do this. Like if I make this my goal, this is what I'm going to have to do. Sure. If there's a plan B, you're just going to fall back on that plan mm -hmm. B. But if you don't have a plan B, you're going to have to make it work somehow, you know? Like, yeah. In my, in my, That's interesting. I've never, I've never heard that. But. Yeah. In my yearbook quote, I put my Spotify link as my, my quote. So it's like, I have to make it now because I go back and That's it's sick. like, who's this random ass dude's Spotify quote in his post? Oh, dude, I like yeah, that a lot. So. Um, no, it makes, I mean, it makes me think about, you know, like, a uh, I don't know if you follow sports, but like an NFL quarterback, for example, or yeah. any, any player in the NFL Absolutely, is like yeah. also, uh, when they're in college, they're attending class. Like they're, mm -hmm. that's, they're required to be in school yeah. and attend football practice. Yeah. Um, and that's probably e equal parts, like learning, learning to, for them to be disciplined and whatnot. But mm -hmm. I guess at, if, if they do get cut from the team, you know, they homie, have that. homie can go and be an accountant, you yeah, know, type of thing. So that's that's yeah. the only reason I ask is like, mm -hmm. I mean, I I'm in my 30s. I still have a plan B. I'm still like, yeah, I still maybe maybe I worded that wrong, but maybe maybe what I mean is like, you know, um, f for me, it's like music doesn't um, music doesn't pay all my bills right now. Yeah, you know, yeah, um, and and you know, um, there it takes years to get to a point maybe where it does um so absolutely i'm always curious yeah. you know because i meet people like you i meet people like that are trying it out like we were talking about before yeah. and there's so many love there's so many different levels of of commitment and passion in in the mm. music industry and um you know you're you're definitely like the top five percent one percent of people that that are like have that drive have that like yeah i'm doing this like i yeah. believe i'm getting a hundred thousand monthly listeners like mm -hmm. that's so cool to see that dude and you you kind of have to be a little bit crazy to do it like i feel like if you're if you're going out high, going out here and you're like want to make music and stuff you have to be a little bit like a little bit kind of crazy with your beliefs and stuff i don't see how else you could yeah you've yeah. got to have an ego about it like not yeah. not like a and i don't, I don't want to be that person that's like oh i'm so great i'm just gonna do all this stuff but I feel like I feel like you kind of have to a little bit because you have to make sure make other people believe yeah. you have to have that confidence to do it. Yeah, like, and I definitely I definitely have that. Like, I still believe. be a cool person to be around. <laughs> yeah, but, which you are, but like, yeah. but also that that um, I'm not gonna name names, but I definitely know people that are just like they're just like, bro, relentless. like what are you doing? <laughs> they're just so relentless yeah. in their pursuit to yeah. like get you to listen to their music or or, mm -hmm. or you know, and um, mm -hmm. that's gotta be there, but it's gotta yeah. also be refined and it's also got to be like kept under control because otherwise oh, yeah. you're just sure. you're gonna you're actually pushing people away then you're like you're what are you doing yeah. yeah yeah so be careful with that. <laughs> just for, absolutely absolutely for anyone listening because yeah you can definitely take that too far and you can oh, just yeah. be like for sure i don't know not fun to be around anymore <laughs> yeah yeah 100 yeah definitely don't want to be that guy um let's talk about your new single yeah changed changed so it's coming out march 9th yeah which i'm very very excited about uh, it's a it's a single that I produced and it was mixed by Jamie Q's and I'm really excited to have it out and release it. It's a little bit more like emotional, kind of mm -hmm. slow going, but it has some like hard hitting 808s and I've, I'm really proud of it and I'm really excited for people to hear it and get their opinion on it. Yeah, man. It's very yeah. cool. It's very cinematic. I really, and I listened to it, I don't know how many times this morning on, on the system here. Yeah. Um, Talk to me about like your layering because there's there's like wide yeah. synth bells and way out there and then there's yeah some guitar textures and other synth there's mm -hmm. there's a lot of stuff going on it doesn't sound crowded though like the, yeah probably you know a big part of that is Jamie being an incredible engineer Absol and finding absolutely. spaces for things absolutely but yeah. talk to me about how you put 
all I put together. it all together. Yeah. So a lot of it, I started out with just like an 808. And that's like the main kind of like synth going through. It's actually an 808. And uh, I started with an 808 for like the main melody. And I just played that on the MIDI. And I just a bunch of different synths and kind of like 808s and drum patterns to go with it. I played guitar on it as well. So I had an electric guitar that I played. I played into the track as well. So I think I have like five different tracks of like just an electric guitar. Nice. All layered together that come into the chorus. I have uh, I have a few different synths that I put into it as well. And the bells that you heard, I played that as well in the back to have like a bit more of a kind of like a ear candy thing. That exactly what it is. I felt, pay yeah, attention nice. To. And yeah, I just really want to have some like maybe a little bit more kind of chill laid back but still is very intricate if you like know mm -hmm. what you're listening for yeah no yeah. it's musical as yeah. musical totally like mm -hmm. um sophisticated even <laughs> <laughs> so talk to me about you know how do you get a song like that from starting with your 808 mm -hmm. building to okay i'm ready to send this off to be mixed how do you know you're at the point where your song is like done or you've taken it to your finish line what does that feel like what does that look like i feel like you know a song is done really kind of when you like can listen to it and be like okay like i'm at peace with this and I, as a producer and as an artist you're never going to really be at peace with the song yeah. there's going to be like something like oh i want to change this or i want to add this yeah. but i feel like once you get to a point where you're like know what like this could be a song and if this is out i'd be happy you know and okay. i feel like once you get to that point you're like okay i can set it off to go get a mix and yep. then keep on going because it went through three different mixes with jamie like three three separate ones and just like little changes we would make but really to get it to that perfect point but before you send it i think you really know kind of like when you're just comfortable with it and when it's you would you'd be happy if it was out you know so i think that's the point that gets to the point where it's like I'm at peace with this song. And is that, is that like a like you doing your own mix and things feeling right, or yeah. is that like a oh I don't have any more ideas for things I want to add anymore? I think it gets to a point where it's like, would I listen to this myself? Because I think mm -hmm. that's a big thing about my music is like I listen to my own music. You know, I I enjoy listening to my own music because mm -hmm. I feel like if my music I didn't like it, I wouldn't care about it. I wouldn't care to promote it because I'd just be like, yeah, whatever. But I feel like if, it, if it's something that I can listen to and I can be like, I like this song, it can really change the game and really kind of help me like know when it's right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that makes sense. Um, if you don't mind, mm -hmm. always curious as a mixer myself, Yeah. Um, you know, when you're sending it back to are you are you going to Jamie's studio to sit and listen to revisions or is it no email I, I, back and forth? It's just all through email. Okay. It's all through yeah. email. Yeah. And especially with like school and stuff, it can kind of be hard to find time sometimes. Totally. But yeah, it's honestly all like the mixing and stuff that I've done, it's all just been through text and through email. Sure. And that's worked really great for me. For that, I'll just I'll like bounce the file and send the stems to Jamie and I'll get it back and yeah, it's just really going on from there. Is there a reference mix? Um, like, oh, I like such and such artist, this song, can we can we lean towards this or is it just like, just make this better? Uh, it, there, can be ref there can be references for mm -hmm. sure. But honestly, I put quite a bit of trust into the mix engineer. Cause like, if I'm choosing you to be a mix engineer, I, I have trust in what you've done i have good trust. yeah that's awesome so i'll just be like what you think sounds cool do that and if i don't like it, i'll tell you you know uh, I, wish, I wish more artists were like you <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Like, do what you think sounds cool i trust you yeah wow <laughs> yeah because honestly like yeah. if, if 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 i get it back and it's like i don't mm -hmm. like this like i'll tell you like i'll be yeah. straight up I'll, mm -hmm. be like, I'll be like that sounds bad mm -hmm. you know because really like i want it to be perfect for me but I'll put the trust in you because I believe that, like, if I'm choosing you to mix, I believe that what you do sounds cool, you know, so. 110, man. Yeah. That's so cool to hear that. Um, And, and, and these, in these revisions, are we, we're just talking like, or is it like turn up ad libs or is it like little yeah, small things? Yeah, so I would like listen to it like a million times. Yeah. And what I do is I'll share it with my friends and like mm -hmm. share it with just anyone who really wants to listen. Yeah. I'll be like, hey, like, 
I'll text them, be like, hey, like, can you like tell me what you like and don't like about the song? I'm like, yeah, I like this, I like this. This part's not my favorite. I'm like, okay, I'll see what I think. Maybe if I agree with it, mm-hmm. I'll tell them. If I don't agree with it, like, I'll just mm-hmm. leave it. But it's really just me listening to it. I mean, like, okay, like, I want to turn up the ad-libs here. I want to do a pause here. I want to do a drum break here. Like, it's just really trying to get it to a point where, like I said, I want to listen to it. Yeah. So... And I'll listen to a bunch of other artists and like what they do with their songs and too, their songs too. Like how I said earlier, like I would always take inspiration from artists like for their Instagram. Same with their songs. Like I'll be like, totally okay. Yeah. If this artist did this in their song, and did this in their song, and had high ad libs here and then low ad libs here, like okay, like maybe I'll try to copy that and make it into my own thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. I mean, nothing wrong with that. That's what most people all across all styles of art are doing we're just copying each other and then trying to make it our own yeah thing, and really. it, just, it, go, it goes into collaboration you know yeah. like i think lots of people are really like guarded off with their music and they're like they don't want to share with other people and they don't want to like oh you shouldn't like use this and but i think really just working with other artists and collaborating is definitely how you do it for sure yeah oh yeah that's huge and so it's it sounds like you're in, in in these back and forths with the mix revisions is there still some like production happening where they're like there's maybe like you were saying changes in yeah not 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 so much like sonics but actual like oh can we try this now or, yeah like for example like we changed i sent over a drum break that i was like maybe this would sound cool and we did it and it sounded so bad but <laughs> it was just just trying it out you know Gotta like try it out yeah you yeah. know and like maybe like trying new things and changing up this and i know jamie added some like lower 808s to it which i was like that's brilliant Mm -hmm. it sounds so cool Mm -hmm. so i was really really happy with the changes we had at the end yeah right on yeah i know it turned out turned out pretty damn good man it's it's um it's a work of art yeah um so that'll be your first single for 2023 yes that will be my first single yeah. for 2023 yeah. yeah that's a big deal i'm pretty happy about yeah. that it's a good yeah. one to start with <laughs> it's off, off to a strong start. yeah and i have more ones coming i've been producing and stuff and i'm just trying to really try to release it every every few months or so mm-hmm. have a new single out for sure is there any plans on like putting out your first project like a body of work as opposed to singles or have you thought about that i have thought about that quite a bit yeah and i really want to be smart about it i want to save the first album for something special so i think if i have like i have like 400 million listeners you know like i'm not like anything crazy so if i put it on the album right now it's not going to get heard and that's just the truth because it's not at a big enough point where i have enough listeners to really hear it so I think I want to save an album, maybe an EP by the end of the year or end of the summer. Mm-hmm. I'll have an EP out. But for an album, I want to save until I have a bit more of a following to really right on. Yeah. get that to get to to get that to more listeners. Because I feel like if you drop an album and it has great songs, but it's an album, people aren't going to want to go all the way through, you know. So, so just build the momentum a little bit more. I think trying to build yeah. the momentum to a point where yeah. I have more listeners, then that's the time to drop an album. So I'll, I'll know, I'll have a feeling like when it's right, but right now it's not the right time to drop an album, I don't think. So I'm just going to keep on going with singles, maybe an EP later in the year, mm-hmm. but really just seeing how things go, you know, and how my myself and the artist can grow and yeah. keep on trying to get more streams and more listeners. Very wise. <laughs> very very calculated charles yeah I, uh, you have to be you have yeah. to be yeah no i was when i was your age i was definitely not this composed with with <laughs> music and uh and my thoughts and my ideas about my career and things like that so good for you i'm really looking forward to you know seeing you develop and seeing how yeah, things go i appreciate I, it. I i'm a, such a big fan um of the music that you put out is like that's the style of music that i personally listen to mm-hmm. the r&b soul stuff yeah um even though i mostly work on hip-hop and trap and things that, that yeah like that r&b is 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 my jam dude so i'm gonna be following you very closely and, and checking out all of your singles yeah 100 percent for sure yeah. um now uh, i'm trying to think of uh you know if we if we skipped anything important really today um okay 
what um me, me yeah I, <laughs> we tried this we tried this with uh with a another episode but maybe we'll try it again like what do you think um is maybe one thing you want to share with your fans that they don't know about you from like your social media or like something interesting about yourself like an interesting fact yeah uh maybe something interesting about me would be that hmm something interesting about me would maybe be that like i didn't really know anything like at all about like music production Mm -hmm. like three years ago like i knew nothing at all like i said i was like making the beats and stuff but it really wasn't anything yeah but now i know a decent amount still not the still not the best but i think maybe that the progression is really important and maybe to people who are artists that are listening that if you really stick with it and you really go through with it i think it can definitely turn to something that's like really really big and really really important so yeah dude that's remarkable that you've what, what you've been able to accomplish in such a short yeah. period of time and it's, i haven't even started yet like it's just it's still going you know and i don't know if I, that's the right place for me to speak on as like i'm not that big of an artist yet either but i think just really sticking with it can only do you good yeah i mean you, you you've definitely got the the whole in my opinion dude like you you've got the whole package like um there's an undeniable um you know quality to your voice when i hear you sing there's just like oh that that person is gifted mm, thank um, you <laughs> as like lame as that sounds <laughs> I appreciate but it. for someone like you know for me been recording 20 plus years worked with a ton of different artists and singers and mm. and you kind of know like pretty quick when someone's talented or gifted yeah and someone that's just like not mm. um but you are definitely talented and you definitely have like a good head on your shoulders and the work ethic so it's just like people better be careful like look out for this <laughs> wow, I, I, I really appreciate it thank you i i'm super thank stoked you. i'm super stoked um yeah just to see like uh, you know to see you succeed man it's gonna yeah, be it's gonna that be really that cool. really means a lot like thank it's you it's really it's gonna be really cool so yeah um yeah let's um let's wrap it up let's um sure. before yeah. we before we go let's um tell everybody where they can find you on social media and on the yeah. internet so all my socials are just Charles Barstow, C-H-A-R-L-E-S-B-A-R-S-T-O-W. If you search that up, something will come up. And please, <laughs> if you have a second, DM me. I answer all my DMs on Instagram. Yep. So reach out, talk to me if you want. That would be great. I'd really appreciate it. And yeah, if you guys could check out my music, that would mean like so much to me as an independent up and coming artist. So yeah. I appreciate all you guys for listening. So, and thank you for having me on. It really means a lot. Oh, so, my, my, it's been a huge pleasure, dude. This has been so much fun. Um, you know, when the, when the episode drops, we'll make sure we have links to, to all your music oh, yeah. and, um, and I'll share that, you know, make a little trailer of our conversation today, perfect. a little fun, <laughs> little 30 second thing to, yeah. to, to get people hyped on checking out the whole episode. Oh yeah. Perfect. Um, Yeah. Uh, well, thank you everybody for for hanging out with us today. It's Charles Barstow, Max Deshaw on Demo to Limo. We are on YouTube now. Thank you for watching the show. Shot on iPhone 14 Pro, and check us out on Apple Music and Spotify as well. Um, our whole catalog is there. All 52 episodes going back to 2018. Um, so come, you know, live relive the journey with us. Support local music, and we'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank Peace. You. Awesome. Thank you, man.